This year at Interior. 2014 marked the 50th anniversaries of two visionary pieces of legislation, the Wilderness Act and the Land and Water Conservation Fund Act, which transformed conservation and outdoor recreation in the United States. At the Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge in New Jersey in September, Secretary Jewell called for the full and permanent funding of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which directs a small portion of royalties from offshore oil and gas operations to build parks and protect open spaces in communities across America. This year, the Secretary announced $102 million in Coastal Resilience Grants aimed at helping Atlantic Coast communities protect themselves from future storms like Superstorm Sandy. The grants are part of the $787 million that the Department is investing post-Sandy and the Obama Administration's Climate Action Plan to make communities more resilient in the face of more frequent and intense storms. The Secretary joined President Obama and the First Lady in June for his historic visit to Indian Country. They visited the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe for its annual Cannonball Flag Day celebration. The visit was a symbol of the administration's commitment to the First Americans and improving the government-to-government -government relationship between the federal government and tribal nations. This year, Secretary Jewell traveled extensively throughout Indian Country to meet with tribes on improving Indian education and boosting tribal economies. A number of public-private partnerships this year to benefit the next generation of outdoor stewards. In October, Secretary Jewell joined The North Face, an American rock band My Morning Jacket, in a joint effort to protect, preserve, and celebrate our nation's public lands. The band re-recorded Woody Guthrie's iconic folk song, This Land is Your Land. Proceeds from downloads of the song on iTunes will go toward jobs for youth and veterans on public lands through the 21st Century Conservation Service Corps. 2014 also saw youth initiative partnerships with American Eagle Outfitters and the Coca-Cola Foundation. A 30-year cooperative recovery effort has brought the wood stork back from the brink of extinction. This year, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service reclassified the wood stork from endangered to threatened under the Endangered Species Act. Thanks to local conservation partnerships, 2014 also saw recoveries for a number of other species, including the Delmarva Peninsula fox squirrel, the Oregon chub, and the Arctic grayling. Wildlife trafficking, one of the top agenda items this year when Secretary Jewell helped to host four African heads of state in August. It was all part of the Obama administration's historic U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit in Washington, D.C. Officials say illegal trade in wildlife is threatening the very existence of iconic species like elephants and rhinoceros. The black market trade undermines security across nations and often involves well-armed, well-equipped, and well-organized networks of criminal insurgent elements. They call it a global challenge that demands a global response. This year, President Obama designated several new national monuments, including the nearly 500,000-acre Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument in southern New Mexico. The local community had been working for a decade to preserve this special area near Las Cruces. The designation is likely to spell an economic boom for the area, including the number of visitors and outdoor adventure seekers. President Obama has now preserved more than 3 million acres of public lands for future generations, including additional designations this year at Point Arena Storadetta and the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. This year, Interior officials announced the award of the first three oil and gas leases in the Gulf of Mexico Transboundary Area, part of the U.S.-Mexico Transboundary Agreement. That's a million and a half acre area on the outer continental shelf now more accessible for oil and gas exploration and production and part of the president's all of the above energy strategy to continue to expand safe and responsible domestic energy production. This year, the secretary joined federal, state, local and tribal leaders to release a blueprint to guide responsible, renewable energy development and conservation of critical landscapes for over 22 million acres of the California desert. The draft Desert Renewable Energy Conservation Plan takes a landscape-level view on how to balance development and conservation. It's all part of the President's Climate Action Plan to create jobs, cut carbon pollution, and develop a clean domestic energy. The fresh water of the Colorado River reconnected with the salt water of the Sea of Cortez for the first time in decades in 2014, thanks to an experimental water release. It's all part of an historic agreement between the U.S. and Mexico to make sure the Colorado River continues to meet the needs of both nations during a period of drought and a changing climate. And the Washington Monument reopened to the public in May of this year, 33 months after it was heavily damaged in the East Coast earthquake of 2011. The Secretary thanked the National Park Service and contractors for getting the repair job done on time and under budget, and thanked philanthropist David Rubenstein for his $7.5 million donation that represented half the cost of repairs. That's just some of what was happening this year at Interior. <music>